Okay. Hello, guys. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on whatever time zone you are in. My name is Faizan Ali, and this is another video as part of a new video lecture series, Meet the Editors. So, you know, I discussed this with you, Dr. Jihan. I want to invite some of my editor friends, even other people who are not my friends yet. Probably we can be friends after the talking with them. Uh, talk about their journals, about the research stream and stuff like this. Now, this is part of the Research Beast initiative on YouTube, right? Um, I've got some good feedback from people asking to make some unique videos, things that they do not really have access to. And I think this is a good idea to talk to editors and see what do they think about research or their particular journals, right? So, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Dr. Jehan Chobanoglu here today. Uh, Dr. Jehan is a good friend of mine. He is my mentor and just like my elder brother. I know him since 2013, actually, when I was a PhD student. Uh, Dr. Jehan is doing a lot of stuff, and I think I'll ask him uh, to you know, talk about some of the things that he do. But today I invited him in his capacity as the editor-in-chief for Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Technology. So, Dr. Jehan, thank you for accepting the invitation and thank of you for course. taking your time to talk to us. So, um, you, before Faisal. we go further, if you don't mind, just say a few words about the stuff that you are doing with Anahe or, you know. Sure, okay. absolutely. Thank you, Faisan. First of all, I, I, my full time job is the McKibben Endowed Chair Professor at the University of South Florida, mm -hmm. Sarasota Manatee. And I also direct the M3 Center, which you are also a very uh, part of it. Uh, which is the uh, Center for Hospital Technology and Innovation. Mm -hmm. And I also currently uh, serve as the president of Association of North America Higher Education International. So uh, these are the main um, responsibilities that I have. Of course, there's a lot of different things, but I also do a lot of research because I really love research. And also part of the responsibility in M3 Center is to produce cutting edge research, not just me, mm -hmm. but people like you and of course we have visiting scholars from mm -hmm. all around the world and different projects that we are working on. Okay, thank you Dr. Jan. So, okay, before we go into, and, and you know, I've already talked to you, but just for the audience, we will be talking about JSTT and the research in JSTT and stuff like this. But uh, before I go into that, uh, since you mentioned about M3 Center and the research that you indulge into with M3 Center, uh, would you mind telling us a few things about the recent research that you have done in JSTT? Not just one, but a few examples of the things that you have done with them. Okay, are you asking about what I have done myself? Uh, with the visiting scholars and other okay. like examples of Because research. I thought you said GHTT because I don't really publish in GHTT. Yeah, I'm no. the editor of that journal. Yes, M3, um, yes, M3 yes, Center. In the M3 Center. Yeah, we do um, a lot of different research. I'll give you one recent example that we just published a paper at the Environment Research Letters, which is a impact factor 6.1, uh, mm -hmm. pretty good journal. So this um, is a great example of collaboration mm -hmm. with industry mm -hmm. uh, and also academics. Uh, I have um, co-authors from Tsinghua University, University of Maryland um, and M3 Center. What we have done is that we have used the M3 data. Mm -hmm. M3 is the hotel accounting and analytics company, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, also the the owner of that company, Mr. John McKibben, who is the beneficiary of our mm -hmm. university, hence the name of the M3 Center comes from there. They have given us data anonymously for almost 3,000 hotels. Mm -hmm. They are financial data. What we have done, we have coupled that with the environmental global warming indicators, such as temperature, humidity, um, uh, inches of rain that mm -hmm. that particular place we match that information with the zip code of the hotel mm -hmm. which then we have wanted to find out if the temperature fluctuation throughout the year has any impact on hotel profits mm -hmm. uh, we call it hotel kps not just the profits but key performance indicators such as profit rep, rep par revenue per available room occupancy etc and the you know, I don't want to go too deep in that particular research, but the findings show that as the temperature goes up, profits go down. Mm -hmm. And there is very logical ex explanation for this because when the temperature goes up, the, the need to cool the rooms is higher, so you spend more electricity and etc. So this is one example. I'm looking at 
uh, just recently what we have done in M3 Center. Mm -hmm. Besides just research, we also are organizing conferences. We bring researchers together. As a matter of fact, next month, mm -hmm. uh, we at the end of uh, next month, we'll be going to Istanbul mm -hmm. to do the uh, the third global conference on business and economics. So that's uh, one particular thing. And we also, I have, um, let me see, I'm looking at different things that, that we are uh, we have done. Dr. Jan, I want to stop you here a little yeah. bit. So, so obviously the, the example that you gave us is very interesting. Environmental issues with the KPIs for the hotels. And it brings me to another question. I want to hold on to it, but um, I want to touch upon something you said that as part of Anahe and M3 Center, there are conferences that you're organizing, right? And you're bringing scholars to talk about different issues. I also heard of think tanks that you are conducting, right? right? Uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about this think tank, what it is, how the idea came, uh, where is it leading to? Right. That's a great question. When I was a PhD student uh, in late 1990s and early 2000, I, I finished my PhD in 2001, we had a, a professor, Mike Olson. Mm -hmm. um, this, uh, you know, he's, he's passed right now, uh, uh, resting uh, him in peace, mm -hmm. uh, that he actually hold these think tanks, but they were more industry oriented. Mm -hmm. So he brought industry people together about hospitality and tourism. Uh, he wanted to predict what's going to happen in the future. So as a PhD student, I've used those think tank findings, results in my research. Mm -hmm. I actually got some of the ideas from there and I use them as a backup to justify some of the research that mm -hmm. I was doing. So, um, since 2000, the last one was done in 2000, nobody else, uh, else have ever done a think tank like this. And um, I was thinking to myself, and then I said, we have these conferences, wonderful outlet, already a lot of people mm -hmm. are coming. Why don't we do one? Mm -hmm. So we started uh, this first one we did in Vietnam in 2017, and we did two of them, in one in New York and one in Cyprus, with mm -hmm. the Enter Conference, and the other one was in New York City. And the amazing thing is that you bring all these scholars and industry people, not just the academics, mm -hmm. but also industry professionals, you come together and you kind of brainstorm what's going to happen 2.30 and beyond. Mm -hmm. And this really gives, um, gave us the, the, all of the, we did so far five think tanks, three mm -hmm. of them in hospitality, one of them is about service management, and the other one was on education itself. Mm -hmm. um, the results were very, very positive. We had um, a lot of different ideas that I never thought of. So based on this one, mm -hmm. uh, we actually come up with some research ideas. Mm -hmm. We are telling young researchers or old researchers, no age discrimination <laughs> here, but whoever, all researchers that, hey, look, these are the things that people are talking about. I'll give you one example. In mm -hmm. one of them, we're talking about autonomous cars, right? Mm -hmm. How that's going to impact travel industry. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the topics came that ethics of it, right? Mm -hmm. Now there is even research nowadays that people are talking about if an autonomous car is going to kill somebody, if mm -hmm. it is inevitable, who should it kill first? Mm -hmm. People are discussing this. So this is one research like topic. Like if there's a dog on the road and there's a human being. Or stroller, there's or a, a baby, stroller, or yeah. a fat man, fat woman. Like so who are should? Talking. Who should go because first? Because it's a machine. It's a machine and you can program it. You can mm -hmm. say that look for an older man or a younger person, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I know it's a little bit radical, but that's what we do as researchers, mm -hmm. right? We need to take tackle the problems of the future. This doesn't exist right now, but yeah. that's what we are doing. As a, as a matter of fact, that's what GHTT, Journal of Hospitality and Tourism mm -hmm. Technology, is trying to get into. Innovation, mm -hmm. right? is the tagline of JHTT. So not just technology, mm -hmm. for the sake of technology, we're not just talking about this device that people mm -hmm. are using when they are booking a room, but we are talking about also innovative ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, we even host some non-technology, traditional non-technology special issues, mm -hmm. like the one that you have done yes. on PLS, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so wonderful, Dr. Jihan. Now, I understand that you talked about the think tanks and how the findings of the think tanks are leading to new research discussions and research ideas and stuff like this, right? Um, I remember that you talked about um, uh, tourism and technology trends, 
right? Or technology trends coming up from these think tanks or the studies that you conducted. Would you mind telling us about that study that you did on the top trends, right? the methodology of it, and of then course. what are some main findings from that study? Yeah, that study is really interesting because I wanted to find out uh, just the trends from different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Because usually what we do is that we just ask one party, uh, the academicians. In this one, we have actually um, did a Delphi study. It was a multi-stage Delphi study. Mm -hmm. So we ask people, mm -hmm. uh, when I say people, that's the industrial professionals, that's the academicians, and that's the tourists, mm -hmm. the travelers, the guests, as mm -hmm. we call it, right? We ask them, what are the top trends in hospitality and tourism without giving them any specific. We didn't tell them about technology or something, anything. So these people really have uh, put together their thoughts. So mm -hmm. two researchers have uh, uh, categorized all of, it's part of the Delphi methodology that you look, and you categorize every single response. Mm -hmm. So we got more than 2,000, I don't remember exactly, but more than 2,000 entries, and every single person put, uh, I think, seven or eight different entries for uh, one one question, and then we combine them, we categorize them by mm -hmm. two researchers, we, we compare them to see if they're valid with each other, mm -hmm. then we come up with top 10 trends. Okay. And this trends now, as a matter of fact, I'm writing an editorial for GHTT, I will invite researchers like you or whoever watching <laughs> this, this video. So interview. it's an open invitation. Open invitation to really start thinking about these trends there is nothing surprising. I mean, I didn't really was expecting anything um, surprising, but we would like to invite people to really think about the research around those trends and then submit them mm -hmm. to GHDT and of course other journals as well. But the second stage of that study was after the qualitative piece was done. Then we have gathered all of these trends, which was more than 10, and then we sent it back to these three groups again for them <coughs> to rank. Mm -hmm. So people rank those trends based on the um, based on their importance to them, and then that's when we come up with this top ten list. Okay, so I'll ask you about that top ten list, but before that, uh, now you mentioned about um, think tanks that bringing academics and industry people gives us a lot of new ideas and new perspectives into things, right? Um, I'm involved in research not for as long as you have been involved or some other leading researchers in our field. But um, I've done quite a lot of research in the recent years, right? And I've seen that many journals are pushing for contribution or there's always a question coming from editors or reviewers like, what is the contribution in this study? Now, since we started talking about JHTT, um, I want you to tell us or even, even our audience who, is, who are interested to submit their papers to JHTT, how do you define contribution? Like what is contribution for you in perspective of GHDT. Right, GHDT, as I told you before, is about hospitality and tourism technology and the tagline is innovation. Mm -hmm. For that reason, we, I am personally, as the editor of this, this journal, and I'm the founding editor, so I'm proud of it. In, in, it's about 10 years old and very successful journal, ranked sixth in, among all hospital journals in Google uh, Scholar, according to Google Scholar. So we welcome uh, different ways of contribution. A lot of journals uh, define a contribution as the empirical paper, which there is data collected by the researcher and then the findings and etc. So for us, we actually welcome empirical research studies, the, the, the original research studies, and we also uh, welcome review papers mm -hmm. or meta-analysis. The way that I look at them very briefly without going too detail is that sometimes, let's say that you're running mm -hmm. in a course and you're running, running, running and after some time you need to stop mm -hmm. and you need to go into 30,000 feet like you're in a plane and look at what you're doing. So in my opinion, review let, uh, papers actually give that. So people stop, look at what has been done in the past in a particular area and then actually forecast to the future what needs to be done, finding the gaps out there. Also, we welcome case studies, although we didn't publish too many of them, mm -hmm. uh, but we do welcome them. And also opinion pieces, mm -hmm. what I call cutting edge research opinion pieces, which again, challenges people to think outside of the box. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, 
uh, gives them inspiration and motivation to do research in different fields. Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, review papers, you know I have uh, concerns about review papers because when I look at general management or marketing journals, there are too many review papers. Even the top cited papers and best papers are review papers. However, when it comes to hospitality and tourism, we don't have that many review papers. I don't know what the reasons are, but we don't have many, right? Um, I like what you said is that review paper is sort of like a 30,000 foot aerial view of looking at things, what has been done, but more importantly, what should be done in the future. This is what you said, right? Exactly. So yes, for the audience, I think it's important to highlight because I've reviewed many review papers where people review the existing state of literature. But they didn't do the next. And that's yeah, the... Yeah. So basically people say that what has been done, but then it stops there. So anybody who wants to do a review paper, the key is not only to stop there, but also to talk about what needs to be done in the future, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay, so netting onto that, what's done to be, uh, what has to be done for the future. Uh, I want to uh, ask you, what if we have some people who want to submit their paper to Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Technology? what are some of the main ideas or what are some of the topics that you would want to see in JHTD for the next one to two or three years, you know? Yes. So first of all, before I start about the topics, I, will, I have a list here um, that, that kind of some interesting things that we published recently, which mm -hmm. can give indication to people who can submit. I just want to tell first that people need to, before writing any kind of paper that because Hospitality and tourism mm -hmm. is an applied field. Mm -hmm. It's not like physics that we work ba mainly on theory. Mm -hmm. Of course, theory is very important be because it explains why we do things. Mm -hmm. But I want all the authors, potential authors, mm -hmm. uh, future authors for GHT to think about, so what? You are doing a particular research, just like you said in the review uh, mm -hmm. paper, sometimes people forget probably the most important part, yes. right? And then you need to think about that, okay, I'm doing this research, but what is that going to contribute? So they need to really think uh, practical and theoretical implications of it. Mm -hmm. So saying that, I would like to tell you, for example, I just look at currently, we have early cited papers, some of the papers that just got accepted and published uh, on JHTT, for example, somebody tackled the issue of mo mobile business travel apps mm. from the user's perspective. Uh, another uh, article looked at technology fit. Somebody actually looked at guest room technology. Oh. And um, we did a progress special issue. Uh, Dr. Mustafa um, from, from, yeah, from Taylor's University, from Taylor's in, University Malaysia. in Malaysia. He has uh, lead a, a, a special issue with Dimitros Buhalis and Rob Lowe. Um, about progress articles, those are the reviews articles. Look at some of them, robots, right? Mm -hmm. So robotics become very uh, uh, important and used even more. It didn't become mainstream yet, but it's going to be mm -hmm. 10, 20 years. So we'll be doing a lot of things with robots. So there is a lot of research that is needed uh, in that area. We are AR, virtual reality, augmented reality. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I mean, the, the potential the opportunities are endless, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of research that needs to be done in that one. Big data, mm -hmm. but everybody is talking about mm -hmm. big data is the new oil, right? Yes. New, new, new oil. So there is again a lot of implications about this. I just wrote a recent article, actually. It's just an opinion piece about data hygiene. So I don't even call it big data anymore. Mm -hmm. I call it uh, fast data. Mm -hmm. And not only just fast data, but also clean data. Mm -hmm. You know, the data needs to be in instantaneous. So when you have the data, that needs to turn into information. And then that goes into uh, reliable data, mm -hmm. right? So not mm -hmm. just uh, uh, sentiment analysis, right? There is a lot of social media people write yes. about it. Can we use, um, and tablet users, uh, interactive, um, um, interactive technologies, when it comes to service industries, mm -hmm. not just hospitality and tourism, JHTT welcomes also mm -hmm. articles about service industry. Because you're moving more into real time, right? Exactly. Right at that time, services are provided, so we need exactly. to understand them. Exactly. And um, NFC, RFID, we don't have too much uh, papers about this, but near field communication and radio frequency, mm -hmm. for example, face deals, where they recognize the person and then offers them mm -hmm. some specials based on that person's uh, public profile. There is new wireless technologies. These are some technology 
uh, based ones that I'm just giving an example, but I didn't see a lot of articles. I want to invite researchers to actually submit articles about Zigbee, mm -hmm. which is the um, another form of wireless uh, communication mm -hmm. like Wi-Fi or Li-Fi, which is uh, light fidelity, right? Mm -hmm. Is actually uh, much cheaper, mm -hmm. less energy by using, let's say, in a hotel room, mm -hmm. uh, space tourism, mm -hmm. right? That's going to come up. Uh, experimental studies where we Which can is. actually look at people how uh, they will behave uh, in a you know two or three different different studies and one thing that I didn't see a lot which I would love to invite researchers is privacy and ethical issues mm -hmm. all these technology things is great like big data mm -hmm. right so there is a lot of new regulations like in Europe for example yes. this global uh, privacy uh, law that they had I mean the policy I guess and so things like this that I would like to invite researchers to submit ethical considerations privacy considerations mm -hmm. security considerations mm -hmm. uh, what happens to those things so these are the some of the papers that we are publishing and I would love to publish okay. in, in GHD. Thank too. you so from what I get and again this is to summarize uh, since it's an uh, it's general hospitality and tourism technology industry is very applied uh, technology is changing very quick so you would like to see papers on new technologies right technologies that are coming up that are not even implemented yet to really see how people feel about it right exactly um, since new technologies like li-fi or uh, nobody has most of the people haven't communicated with that so for that type of thing we from psychological perspective we should look at how people would react to it, like what are perceptions, what are things, acceptance, right? perceptions, acceptance, impact, exactly. And then there are some older technologies, like which people are already using. So in that case, from psychological perspective, we would be looking at how happy are people with it, or are they really making life easier for people? That experience, experience, how it impacts the experience. And there is where experimental studies come into the picture, exactly. to look at different samples and to look at different usage patterns and stuff like this, right? right. Um, lastly, uh, whenever we talk about contribution and you already answered like, what do you think contribution is? What do you feel about replication? Because this is also something where many people are saying like, wow, it's just another replication study. I don't want it. Right, right. What do you think? Right, it, it, that's a great question. And I always ask that question to myself. And when we are, uh, also talking with the uh, assistant editors, associate editors, and also the regional editors mm -hmm. in GHTT that my view on replication studies, that replication studies could be useful. There are times that it could be useful. When I look at a replication study, I look at what has been done differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, If somebody, let's say, do a, a TAM, which mm -hmm. is overused now, technology acceptance model, in uh, using robots, mm -hmm. for example, in a hotel environment in Hong Kong. And another researcher are taking exactly the same study without doing anything new and doing this in Florida. To me, that's not good research because you're really not uh, contributing anything. What I really wanna see in replication studies is that they are really adding something new. Mm -hmm. The geographical um, collection of the data could be a good one, but it's not enough by itself. So the study must really look at what has been done mm -hmm. and look at that study. Sometimes I've seen replication studies where the authors actually say in the results and findings section, implications that uh, the study needs to be changed. For example, some of the variables mm -hmm. prove not to be significant mm -hmm. in the model that they are testing. So I see a replication study, they still use the yeah, same, same thing. Right? So, uh, so things like this, maybe, the, the, the authors of the original study have said that uh, these needs to be moderating uh, uh, variables, needs to be introduced mm -hmm. into the study. So all of these things needs to be done. And more importantly, that the authors need to justify it and definitely be open, mm -hmm. right? Never hide the fact that could say that, but again, replication studies, if it is up to me, I would always suggest to authors not to just look at the replications, look at the studies that has been done. And again, it's very important for a researcher to go up to 30,000 feet and look down. Oh, this has been done. They have done this, this has been this done. Now I need to connect mm -hmm. them all together or I need to take this piece, this particular piece from here, 
combine that with that piece to be able to see if I can explain things better, mm -hmm. uh, more efficiently, and higher validity. Okay, so again, to summarize the application, you are okay with it as far as it is well justified. Even if it's geographical replication, to explain why are we doing it in another geographical area, what's the change, like what's the difference between these two areas, right? For example, one study if is conducted in Saudi Arabia, and if we replicate that study with somewhere like, let's say, South Korea, these are two very different countries, culturally very different. So if you are doing Maybe this- Culture is a part. Yes, there, so yeah. we should bring more culture to explain like what is the difference, like why are we doing it? Uh, another way of replication would be if there were studies, like I, I, I remember you did a study about business traveler preferences about technology and hotels. That was, I guess, 10 or years ago. Yeah. Years ago. Something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that type of a study, or I remember Dr. Pat Molio did a study on solo right. female travelers, exactly. which was 10, 15 years they ago. They need to be redone. As a matter of fact, I'm doing it now. Yes, so you are doing that study now. It needs to be done yes. because a lot of new technologies came now. So, so that would be a good replication. Where you are exactly. replic and, but then you explain like which are the technologies that phased out, which are still there. I mean, we used to have facts, yes. for example, in that study. Mm -hmm. No more facts, right? Or perhaps like Y5. 10 years ago, it was sort of a luxury. People, not everybody was, you know, offering it and people were charging a lot of money for it. But now it's a basic necessity. Yeah, yeah, it's like you need it. If you don't have it, you... Bring your own devices yes. also became a, mm -hmm. a part of the room, okay. room technology. Not at that time, it didn't exist. Right. So that's a very good example, actually. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jehan. So uh, thank you very much again for talking to us. Um, obviously, I want to keep these interviews short and sweet so that people can really look into it. They can pull their hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, now, what I'll do is, obviously, I'll flash your email address if you agree to it. Sure, so if course, anybody yeah. has any questions, are you okay if they email yeah, you? Yeah, sure. And the website. They also yeah, so I'll, I'll uh, put them up here and then uh, whoever is watching uh, you can obviously go to the website or you can email Dr. Jehan you can email me and I'll try to help as much as and I just want to add one more thing uh -huh. that I would like to tell everybody who is watching this video that please don't hesitate to contact the editors myself yes. for example if you have an idea and if you want before you spend too much time investing in that particular mm -hmm. article to send jot an email I am also available, many of the editors are available mm -hmm. on social media. Feel free to approach us from all these multiple, you know, uh, mm -hmm. touch points. Ask a question. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I see my role as not just a rejecter, mm -hmm. but more as a developer, right? Mm -hmm. I would love to work with researchers, turn their research from good to better and then to the best. Right, right. So, yeah, very good idea. And we were earlier talking about stereotypes, right? So it's a very common thing, especially with developing countries. People have a sort of stereotype fear. of fear right. for fear, editors yeah. or you know top level scholars or researchers. And sometimes it also happens that, let's say if I have a bad experience with an editor and I go and tell my friends, my friends without even approaching that editor would have this negative feeling, right? Exactly. So I think it's a good idea just to like, I have done this many times. In fact, I know you through contacting you, or I know Kesangu or some very good scholars just by contacting exactly. them, right? So I think it's a good idea. If you have any idea, you're not sure about it, if it's a right fit for the journal, just approach the editor. Sometimes editors would even ask you to develop this further before exactly. submitting, right? And social so media is a great mm -hmm. tool there. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So thank you again, Dr. Jehan. Thank you. Uh, it My was pleasure. a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.